Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Dr. Shruti Malik, and this is Dr. Stephen Greenhouse, both of the Fair Oaks office at Shady Grove Fertility. Today, we would like to talk to you about recurrent pregnancy loss and some of the options available for our patients. So, Dr. Greenhouse, just to start off, how would you define recurrent pregnancy loss? So, we define recurrent pregnancy loss as a woman um, having two or more uh, miscarriages. Mm -hmm. These can be consecutive miscarriages, or they can be um, interspersed between that and potentially a live birth as well. Okay. And how common would you say both miscarriage as well as recurrent pregnancy loss is? So miscarriages in general are relatively common. Um, in a woman in her 20s, miscarriage rates may be somewhere around 20%. By the time a woman is 40, uh, miscarriage rates may be as high as 50 or 60%. Uh, and the likelihood of having two consecutive miscarriages is less than 5%, and that's why we recommend an evaluation begin um, after this has occurred. Okay, great. Um, and so age definitely has an impact on Absolutely. Um, certainly one of the most common causes of a first trimester miscarriage is a chromosome abnormality within the embryo. And as a woman gets older, the percentage of embryos that are genetically abnormal um, increases. Um, so in terms of causes of recurrent pregnancy loss, how would you um, discuss those right. number of causes with your patients. Right. So first thing we'll do is we'll go through their history, we'll uh, go through the obstetrical history, how many losses they've had, have they had any live births before, their family history, their medical history. Um, we'll then begin and discuss an evaluation. Um, some of the testing we'll do is we'll, we'll check the general chromosomes on both partners because one of the partners may have a rearrangement of the chromosome, something called a balanced translocation. Uh, we'll do testing of the uterus uh, to look for abnormalities such as scarring or a condition called a uterine septum. Uh, we'll do some hormone testing, looking at progesterone levels, uh, thyroid levels, prolactin. Uh, we may do some clotting testing or autoimmune um, testing as, as well. Okay, great. Um, what about lifestyle factors? Could those have an effect on recurrent pregnancy loss as well? Certainly, and I think that this is one of the real frustrating things for patients is that they really want to do something to be actively involved in in order to improve the chances. And I think that there are certain things that can be done. Uh, if people are smokers, uh, they should definitely stop. You want to limit caffeine um, use, uh, limit or not drink alcohol. Um, also, weight plays an important role that um, women or men, if they're overweight, mm -hmm. there are increased incidence of recurrent pregnancy loss. So what options are available for patients that are struggling with recurrent pregnancy loss? So uh, we'll target the, the treatment uh, based upon sort of what the diagnosis is. Um, the frustrating part uh, with recurrent pregnancy loss workup is that in 50, 60 percent of patients, no specific etiology may be found, which is, which is very, very frustrating. And it doesn't mean that there aren't treatments. It doesn't mean that the patient will never have a, a successful pregnancy. Uh, but it's just frustrating not know why. And more recently, one of the things that we've been able to do is doing in vitro fertilization with something called pre-implantation genetic screening. And this is where the embryos are biopsied at something called the blastocyst stage. And then we can send those cells off to be analyzed for the genetics of the embryo. And what we find is not only in patients um, who have recurrent pregnancy loss, but even people who are having difficulties getting pregnant, as they get older, uh, there's a very high percentage of embryos that may be abnormal, especially a woman in her late 30s or early 40s. And this allows us to uh, improve pregnancy rates, but more importantly, decrease miscarriage rates. It doesn't eliminate miscarriage, but it dramatically helps to, to lower that. Um, and so with the, the pre-implantation genetic screening, in a woman who's 40, you may lower miscarriage rates from about 50% down to about 8 to 10%. So this is a good option for patients to try to improve their chances and give yeah. them the best possible embryo to place back in yeah. the uterus and ensure that it's more likely to be chromosomally right. balanced. Yeah, exactly. And this may not necessarily be the first line of treatment that someone will go through when they come in to meet with us, but it certainly is now becoming more standard to begin the discussions of this and have it as an, as an option for patients. It also depends upon how old the patient is, how many miscarriages they've had, of how aggressive we may be with treatment. Thank you for joining us today and encourage you to visit our website, www.shadygrowfertility.com. And there are a number of resources available for our patients there, as well as support groups, um, which we encourage all of our patients to look into as well. Um, but please feel free to look at it for more information. And if you'd like to schedule an appointment, um, please call our number as well.
Thank you. Have a great day.